All right, everybody. Thanks for coming out. John Ryback here at the Wellbridge Clinic. And today we're going to be talking about sleep. I'm going to close the door, make sure that we get all of our ears. Okay, so sleep is probably one of the most important things that we have in our lives. It is the way our body rejuvenates itself, heals itself, and manages its emotional state also. So sleep is a cornerstone and we spend so much time in it. So we want to look at different natural solutions into sleep because there are so many different choices out there that are downright unhealthy. Plenty of research has been done on one of the most commonly prescribed pharmaceuticals like Ambien and how dangerous and detrimental they can be to your health and your long-term sleep. Um, so one of the things I really want to go through is understanding what is sleep and how it affects you. Because there are three main types of sleep, um, one of which is going to be light sleep. And that's a, a, just a mild, restful state where we're unconscious. But sleep is so much more than just closing your eyes and becoming unconscious. And it happens when we're in our REM sleep cycle and when we go into a deep sleep cycle. And, and each cycle is distinctive and has different physiologic effects which translate to better, happier days. Um, sleep should always help us feel rested. And a lot of people as an acupuncturist, I hear people say that they just don't feel rested after sleeping and that's one of the core things that we can approach. So um, we're going to um, go through how we're processing emotions and how, we're, um, how the body is healing itself um, and what sleep has to do with that because, like I said, sleep is the cornerstone of all things. Um, we treat in our clinic many different pathologies, um, but if people aren't sleeping well, they don't get better. You can do all the chiropractic, all the PT, all the acupuncture in your life. Um, you can take all the pills, but if you're not sleeping better, Nothing really, it's hard to move the needle forward. Um, so that's what we're gonna dive into today. Um, not only that, sleep helps us make memories. Research shows that people have less likelihood of dementia, less likelihood of Alzheimer's with better sleep. Um, and an increase in dementia and an increase in Alzheimer's and memory-related diseases when they take pharmacologic interventions that basically just hold our consciousness down into a restful state and you don't actually get the benefits of being unconscious. So it's so different, and we've got to understand the differences of that so we can move forward. At the end of the day, our success and our happiness really pivot upon our ability to sleep well. Um, all of these vital tasks happen during sleep. And not only that, but to be able to get into those restful states while we're awake is part of what meditation is, but it also is where a lot of CEOs, like Fortune 500 CEOs, are at right now and trying to increase their performance. And they're learning how to get that physiologic system, so the brain to downregulate so that they can perform at a high level at any time and get those benefits throughout the day and then sleep better and maximize it while they're down at night or whatever time of the day that they're going at. So over and over, I really want to emphasize that there are a lot of things in the world that are common, but they're not normal. Um, just, I don't want to minimize it, but I also don't want to be inflammatory. But more times than not, we spend our lives minimizing these problems and just waiting for them to resolve on their own and just taking one on the chin, you know, like no pain, no gain. Now, all these sayings that we have that are just endurance mechanisms that are creating more and more problems. So it's so important to see that 40 million people every year experience chronic sleep issues. 40 million people in the US alone. This, this is a US study. Um, and people that have occasional sleep issues number in the 20 million. So that's about 80 million people. That's pushing like 30% of the United States. Um, and those are the people that are reporting it and understanding what sleep is and how they're sleeping. Um, and this interferes with our moods, our relationships, our work, um, and really it has a profound effect on our health and our long-term health outcomes. Chronic illness stems from poor sleep. So I don't want to stir you up and not let you understand that there's definitely ways about it. Um, so we're gonna dive into that 
And at the end of the day, I think the study is a, is a decade or two old, but chronic sleep problems cost the country $16 billion a year. And that's just coming, and then that's not even counting from these unattributed health problems like heart disease and things like that that we get into here in a bit. So as we go through the research, it's abundantly clear that our heart, our heart health, our psychological health, our respiratory health, how we experience pain coming from inflammation, and, and then what comes from tissue repair, all hinge upon what happens while we sleep. Now, this is kind of a horrible study, um, bear with me, but it illustrates a really important point. Um, everybody stick, hanging with me? Okay, good. So, there was a study done on rats. And let's just ignore the fact that it was on animals and it's pretty cruel, but they deprived, rats live about, what is it, like two to three years on natural life. Um, but in the study, they depri deprived rats of REM sleep, that dream state sleep that we go into. It's a little bit, it's a little bit more conscious, it's rapid eye movement. Um, they deprived these rats of REM sleep and they only survived eight, or excuse me, five weeks on average, five weeks. And then they deprived rat, these, those rat populations completely of sleep, no sleep. These rats only survived three weeks. So I, I don't wanna be too inflammatory, but I'm trying to say sleep is kind of important. Um, what happens, what are the impacts of sleep? So high blood pressure more and more common with sleep. Heart disease, more and more common with sleep, with sleep poor sleep. And then as there comes our, our mind, and everybody knows if you don't get a good sleep, night's sleep, you, you felt it before. I mean, who hasn't felt a, a poor night's sleep and felt what the day's like? I mean, um, but mood is, is, people report poor moods. People report more anxiety. People report higher levels of uh, lower levels of focus and more depression. So, and, and this affects everybody across the spectrum, and that's why they change school schedules so that teens can sleep longer and things like that, because this has a huge impact on brain development. And then, for those of us that have our fully developed brains, um, we also need to repair the tissues in there, and that is coming from sleep. Weight loss. Um, Weight loss is a big one, it's something that we speak about to people about all the time, and they say, well, okay, well, does acupuncture help with weight loss? And I can honestly, genuinely say yes, unequivocally yes, acupuncture is great for helping people lose weight, but it's not like we have a point where we just let out a little air of the tires. What we're doing is managing cortisol levels, managing stress hormones, and that is how we get people to sleep better and then that is how we manage insulin levels, and then people get better and they're able to lose weight. All those diets that never worked, all those exercise regimens that never worked. I'm telling you, like everybody's felt been there probably. There's a lot of people out there that we speak with every single day in the clinic, and they suffer because they work so darn hard and they still just can't drop the pounds. But that is coming from poor sleep. Um, and what is happening there? It's a dysregulation of our cortisol levels. It's our poor management of our stress hormones. And in case I, I'm all alone in this, it, it, there's a lot of stress out there in the world. So managing our sleep, lowering our cortisol levels are great ways to see sleep, to get better sleep. Um, and in there, people have better, they, they reduce their insulin resistance. So they have, so, they, so that their insulin medications are work better and so their diabetes get better, the A1Cs get better, their blood glucose gets better, and this is how acupuncture works, is we work systemically, and we're making sure we're putting it all together, because if we just keep punching people with Ambien all the time, nobody's gonna get the grander benefit, and everybody wants added benefits, and that's the nice thing about what we do at the Wellbridge Clinic, is we make sure people get added benefits. Um, it doesn't stop there. We're a system, and, and it's like driving a car, but if you only have one wheel, and you're only working with one wheel at a time, well then, it's not gonna drive too, too, too well, is it? 
Um, so as we go through this, we understand that like our immunity depends upon our ability to lower the stress hormones, but also rest, and because our body does tissue repair during that time. And then, and, and that, that includes our ability to resist colds and flus and respiratory illness, but it also manages how our body is able to clean up those cells that don't belong there. And those are, uh, melan uh, those are cancer cells. And so our immune system works on cancer, clearing up cancer cells. It's, it's always tidying up, and those, those cells come up all the time. But the goal is, is to do that, and you gotta give your body time to do the autophagy, to go through and start cleaning up. Uh, and that happens during our sleep. Um, and then aging and longevity, how we are managing our lives, um, and that comes with our cognitive health um, and our skin health and how we're, how we're replenishing the collagen layers of our skin. This is all associated with how we manage all these things we've been talking about of how sleep impacts our life. Um, our hormones are changed. So when, um, when we're working, for instance, with people that are uh, having menstrual dysregulation, um, men with testosterone issues, uh, um, menopausal issues, these are all in there. Because sleep is a time that we are able to do a reset. And so aging is part of the process. So research clearly is, is pointing to one of the most important things that we can do for all of our lives is to sleep better. And, and one of these quotes in here is like, by any measuring stick, the deaths, illness, and damage due to sleep deprivation and sleep disorders represent a substantial burden upon American society. Hi, welcome. So how, how do people, what, there's so many different flavors of sleep disorders. Um, there's three real big ones. Um, there's insomnia, and that's just like a really blanket statement. We're gonna get di dial into different types and the ways that we can approach that. Um, and then there's sleep apnea. So there's a respiratory impact where people are snoring, they're having um, uh, respiratory uh, occlusion so they can't breathe well. And then there's a restless leg syndrome. That can be a neurological issue. That can be something to do with our electrolyte balances. It can be stress. Um, so we're, let's just dive into each one because we'll approach each one differently. So when we get into our supplements, we'll know, and different exercises that we can do, breathing exercises and the appropriate supplements to address what kind of sleep we want and what we're not getting. So it, we want to dial it down because, it, again, if we just nuke ourselves with Ambien, for instance, it's, it, it's, it's not a, accounting for the nuances that we're working with. Um, so insomnia. Insomnia, there are several different types, but the three big ones are one, one or all of them um, people have difficulty falling asleep. And so you can just self-identify and see what, that, what feels right to you. And then there's people that have difficulty staying asleep. So if, if woken up by dreams and things like that, um, and then not being able to get back to sleep. Because sometimes we stir, but you should always drop back to sleep. If anybody has like a Fitbit, an Aura Ring, or, or an eye, eye watch, something that's measuring, really recommend that because you can see how you're changing when you're doing these exercises that we'll get into in just a little bit. Um, but insomnia is one that you, it's, it's just a blanket statement, but there's so many nuances, again, that we want to talk to people about. And that's what we do in the clinic, is we always make sure that we like know what types. Because in Chinese medicine, there isn't just like, can't sleep. Oh, okay. There's not a pill for an L here. Um, sleep apnea. And that's that persistent loud snoring at night. If you've ever had a partner that, that snores loudly, or uh, you know somebody that does that, that actually is a sleep disorder that can really cause some physiologic impacts. Um, and then daytime sleepiness, as you know, it's starting to be cumbersome when these folks are waking up groggy, um, and, some, and, and it has really strong impacts on heart health. Then what gets a little scary is when people stop breathing, and then there's those long pauses during sleep. I remember I was on a 24-hour uh, a, a train across China um, like 25 years ago, and Everybody left my sleeper car because they didn't want to sleep with, with I was the only white guy on the train. I was the only foreigner on the train. Um, and I was, sleep, I, was, I was traveling just basic class, like, like regular people. And um, I went to sleep, my car was full. And then everybody left, 
But the one person that was in there was a guy with sleep apnea. And, it, and, and he stopped sleeping, stopped breathing all night long. It was the most, I had no idea what that was like. But I would stop breathing because I would hear him like gasping for air in the sleeper, like an arm's reach across the car from me. It was, it was, it was, I, I have a great appreciation for sleep apnea and with the impact. And I think because when that, my room emptied, I think they kicked him out and they're like, you go hang out with the foreigner. Wake him up, leave him up. I'm just, everybody's really nice to me during the day, but they didn't want to spend the night with me in my car. Um, but yeah, but just, just, I could feel it. And I could feel him stop breathing. And I actually would just kind of kick my, kick across and kick his bunk so that he would, he would wake up and, and then he'd do that horrible sound. Yeah. At any rate, sleep apnea is a really big one. If anybody has that, really want to look at inflammation, we'll get into some of those ones, but um, preview is you really want to look at systemic inflammation. CPAPs are really important, change people's lives. Some people just won't wear a CPAP because it's, it's scary. It's scary, you have a fa- thing over your face, but um, there are other ways to approach that. And one of the most fundamental ones that we'll, uh, we would approach from a holistic, comprehensive medical perspective um, is managing systemic inflammation because it's indicative of a greater situation. So when one tissue flares up, usually it's something else is happening. And then there's RLS, right? Restless leg syndrome, people that get leg cramping, numbness and tingling, spasms, um, and, uh, and then they're constantly twitching or moving. There's a couple of different causes of that, and then we just drill down and to find out what is going on to make sure that they're able to function and rest and let their body rest. Um, so this is where I'm alluding to is like, there's a lot of approaches, and the most common approaches are a pill for an ill. Um, but the approach that we take at the Wellbridge Clinic is we always are making sure that we take a holistic systems approach. Holistic medicine has kind of a bad rap, but there's plenty of science that supports it. It's just articulated poorly. And so I, that's kind of what I'm trying to help everybody understand is like, we want to understand our bodies as a comprehensive system rather than a set of individualized systems that go to individual specialists. Um, and don't get me wrong, I'm not against pharmacologic interventions. That's really a crucial thing. But the goal is the long run is to see why is there a cause? Because we don't want to just get into the, alt- the really it's the alternative is just symptom management. Um, that's getting into catastrophic care. And where we come in is we're more prevention. We're like, we bring people back from the catastrophe, but if, you, if, if people are in a catastrophic situation, you gotta go to the, the surgeon and you gotta get your pills and things like that. But when we have the opportunity is to work earlier. Because there's a saying, that most people have heard, some people, like when's the best time to plant a tree? And they say, well, 20 years ago is the best time to start plant a tree, and the second best time is now. Um, similarly, in preventative medicine and holistic medicine, uh, the best time to start preventative medicine and holistic approaches is 20 years ago, the second best time is now. So, um, and, but I don't wanna get into, there's a problem in, in this, that you get into with holistic practitioners and they're like, well, I don't do a pill for an ill, but I'll do a vitamin for an ill or an amino acid. That's not the answer either. Um, and, it, and at the end, we'll chat about how Chinese medicine is unique in that and how it has an organizational structure that can, can tease out all the individual pieces rather than just going, oh, deficiency, vitamin. And then you go home with a bucket full of vitamins, and that's not the answer either. Definitely not. But at the end of the day, another huge, huge step in managing pain is, um, is pain. Uh, managing poor sleep is through pain management um, because a lot of people just, you move, in the, and move at night and it wakes them up. Move at night, wakes them up. You can't lay down, can't sit up. It's a thing, chronic pain, in, uh, like acute pain, injuries, um, car accidents. And that's where acupuncture really shines, where everybody really identifies with acupuncture. But it's that holistic approach that we can manage pain, chronic or acute, and help people get better and sleep better too. And that's one of the measures we always do at the clinic, like how often do you wake at night? Can you sleep because of the pain? Um, so again, like Stanford University and ABC News and USA Today did a study on pain um, and they found that of the people that, re- that responded to the survey, 50% of Americans, 50%, that's like, pushing 200 million people suffer from chronic pain in a year. And chronic pain qualifies as pain that lasts more than three months. 
Question? Of any level. Of any level. Like, real generalized. So you, like, and then they, they, they broke down the criteria. I didn't read the study in depth. But, um, yeah, and then of that, um, another 40% who didn't identify a chronic pain as, like, something that interferes with their life. Chronic pain, the criteria. It was Stanford, I'm sure, like, genuinely, I'm sure that they, they weren't fluffing it up. Um, but 46% of people experience in interfering pain in the last two weeks. So it, pain's a thing. And I don't want to minimize that because we get into this Jane Fonda mentality of no pain, no gain. I'm like, no, 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 no. We'd like, take care of that. Take care of it and because it has repercussions. So any program that we do to make sure we're helping people always has to account for pain and it has to account for sleep because that's going to be the push and the pull. Um, Second cause after pain is stress. I mean, I don't know about you all, everybody who's watching, but um, stress is, is a thing. We live in a stressful society, and it doesn't matter where you are in society, stress is a thing. I mean, like, seeing people that don't ever have to worry about money in their entire lives. Staggering amount of stress and discontent in life. I've seen people that I, I've worked with, single moms, just barely getting by and, and everything in between. It doesn't matter who you are. Stress is a thing. And how we manage that is, is important. Um, and our body keeps the score. We hold stress when we can't process it. And so we want to make sure we're processing it in sleep, having the tools, and releasing that through good physiologic um, interventions. Um, yeah, again, like, it's, it's kind of a gray, it's a tough, it's, it's a qualitative assessment, but studies have shown that the mother of all diseases is stress, and 80%, 70, 80% of all doctor's illnesses are stress-related. One way or another, like whether it's long-term affecting our cardiovascular health, it, it, people, like, people with heightened levels of anxiety are four to five more times more likely to, to have a heart attack or a stroke. Um, and 50% of all illnesses are attributed to stress one way or another. Again, it's kind of a, a qualitative assessment, but still really important. And we all have felt stress before. We know how that can be. So we want to look for different ways out. And to describe how that works at the end of the day is it, like we always want to make sure we're managing our adrenal glands. And so sleep's going to come through making sure that we're not drilling all kinds of cortisol levels. And there's a saying that you can, there's an old story that is, um, if you, there's an old king, there's a story of an old king in India and the emperor would go out into, into the villages and he would hurt his feet. Thorns and stones and things like that would be injuring his feet over and over. And as he went out into, to, to travel through his, his kingdom, he would always complain, come home and complain about how every step he took hurt his feet until he had it one day and he brought his minister in and he said, I'm making an edict, I want you, I'm sick of it, I can't handle it, every time I walk outside of, out of my palace, it hurts my feet. And to, said to the minister, you need to go out and cover the entire earth in leather to protect my feet. And the job of a good minister, um, and if anybody who's an acupuncturist knows I'm speaking of about the heart and the small intestine, um, uh, any, the job of, any, of a good minister is to filter. Filter out the edicts of a crazy king, a, ki a crazy queen. And so we want to make sure that we're filtering out the stress and how that's being manifested and the ridiculous, how we're behaving to it. And so to go, go the minister thinks, well, what do I do? I can't go out and cover, we don't have enough leather for one, and the rest of the people would be infuriated. So he said, sire, here, I got an idea for you, like a good minister let's do, make this thing called a shoe and let's cover your feet and make sure that you are protected from all the thorns and the slings and the arrows that might hurt your delicate feet because we all have delicate feet in the metaphorically but the goal is is a, what i'm trying to say is you can't control the environment but what we can do is control how we react to the environment and using all of these tools and as we do that we build up a tool set that allows us to sleep better, feel less pain, and from there, the dominoes go down, and then there's, a, there's so many more opportunities to overcome chronic and acute health issues. So, 
Cortisol, it, 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 it impacts our immune system. It dictates when we like to be active, and it naturally has a rhythm. Um, it starts in the morning, and, and you know cortisol levels drop around tea time. Um, it's, it's a built-in thing. And when cortisol is low, we get tired. Um, and so cultures have built in times for coffee and tea and rests and breaks. Um, it's, it's to ride those cortisol levels. We are a slave to how it works. And in the morning, these cortisol levels are built on a 24-hour cycle. Chinese medicine has a, a corresponding circadian rhythm that's much more refined than our typical understanding of light and dark, sleep and wake. Throughout the day, we have diagnostic understandings of where those cortisol levels are and how they relate to our internal organs. And in the morning is the most important time to get your highest levels of cortisol levels. So it's like if, if you've ever seen a surfer or anybody riding a wave, you want to get up on that beginning stage and that's supposed to be, and it's malleable because we have different chronotype, chronotypes. We have different types of time affiliation during our day. But as a general rule, the average part group of the population should have the highest cortisol spike at six to eight a.m. And, and in Chinese medicine, we have our own corresponding meaning for what that time has. And then our lowest levels should be around midnight. And as it gets lower, different physiologic changes occur. And so cortisol causes stress, but so does tiredness. So we're trying to find a happy medium because cortisol is not an evil thing. We were, I don't want to demonize cortisol. So we want to make sure that we're using our stress hormones properly. It's like procrastination. Procrastination is a really important tool that we use. Everybody demonizes procrastination, but really procrastination is just our opportunity to turn the engine, put a little gas in the tank, and you know, you know what I'm talking about at the end of the, like, you're like, not gonna do it, not gonna do it, oh my God, I have to do it, I have to do it, still don't wanna do it, gotta do it, and then all of a sudden, boom, like, it gets done. You, you vacuum, you clean, you do your paper, whatever. You, yeah, yeah. So that's part, that's part of how we're really using our stress hormones to our benefit. Um, so let's not, let's, let's love them a little bit and learn how we can use them better and, and manage our sleep. Because there's no escape from stress. We can't pave the world in leather and, and make sure that our feet don't get hurt. Um, so there's a couple different tests to know where, your, where our cortisol and stress hormone dysregulation is. Um, We'll, we can do it through orthostatic blood pressure tests. So if anybody has a BP cuff at home um, or a finger cuff, um, the exercise is up here. So you can, if you want to take a screenshot of it or just remember, um, be happy, and this is recorded. Um, so you lay flat for five minutes. Let yourself totally relax. Let, and then in doing so, all the blood vessels relax and they're not, and they're, they're not taught pushing blood up, up, uphill all the time. And then get your blood, and then take your blood pressure while you're lying down. And then immediately jump up and take your blood pressure as soon as you touch the ground. And you should have a, a rise of blood pressure by 15 points because, of, because every vessel should squeeze increasing blood pressure to make sure that the blood that had to be pumped easily in, the, in a supine position now can push itself up to the head. You, you know, like ortho, you, as nurses, you, ortho, orthostatic blood pressure, people get up and they get dizzy. That's an adrenal issue. Yeah, that's an adrenal issue. It's like common as you get older, right? There's a lot of things that are common, but not normal. And you don't have to do that. Well, I like that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so when you say it's a very 15 point, do you need a diastolic? Um, it, like combined. Diastolic and... Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, but typically the diastolic. Um, is one I'm usually watching after because because I'm not so interested in the in the bottom I'm lo looking at the top excuse me so I'm looking at the just so I didn't I was speaking for people I'm looking at the top number on that one you want the top number to go because the, the bottom number is when you're relaxed so that's when like top number is squeeze bottom number is, re is relax of your heart um, so yeah so look at it that way um, but that's, that's a cortisol issue. That's a good way to understand, not, not exclusively, but it's a, re it's a really clear, easy, homegrown diagnostic. Um, and then another one is you can shine a light in your eyes. 
and you can do the paradoxical pupillary, pupillary response, and you shine a light into eyes. You can, it's hard to do to yourself, but doctors will do that, and they'll do a neurologic exam and hold the light into the eyes. Um, 30 seconds can be a little torturous, but, the, but what you're looking for is a contraction of the pupil. Um, and sometimes you see people that um, are unable, and it's diagnostic, sometimes it's like when you're treating concussions, you see people that aren't able to fluctuate. That's really important. Yeah, go on there. And these are great ones when you're working with populations that might be compromised in many different ways. They might be fatigued, they might have intoxicants and things like that, but if they're not, maybe they're, so, they're just tired and unable to, to get that tiger in their tank to, to take care of themselves. Um, and then there's salivary tests. That's a really important one, that's doctor directed. Um, if you find a nice endocrinologist, naturopaths tend to do that, chiropractors, acupuncturists can do that. We don't do that in our clinic, it's just a little bit over the top, um, but a lot of people can order salivary tests and you just do salivary tests throughout the day. Um, again, all these things, you don't put all your eggs in one basket. You don't take one test and come to an absolute and complete, complete conclusion. And I really wanna make emphasize that one to everybody that's listening is you don't make a conclusion off of one piece of information. And that's why you hear me kind of, it might seem kind of scattered, but I'm gonna bring it all together. And so that you understand that it's like, we're gonna take this piece of data, this piece of data, this piece of data, and this piece of data. And then we put it into a holistic strategy for people to get better. Um, so, um, and so it's like, like the inside of my mind when I'm working with a patient is I have an organizational system and I have like these cognitive buckets and as I'm interviewing and chatting with people, I'm, fi I'm filling up buckets and some will get more full than others and some will stay empty. We all have different presentations because I get asked, well, what do you specialize in? And I'm like, well, most people find us for pain, but I specialize, we specialize in the individual in front of us because one person's headache is not the same as the other person's headache. Um, so commonly, again, like one of the most prescribed pharmaceuticals in the world is Ambien. Um, and this, there are repercussions to taking narcotic sleep medications. First off, they're narcotic. Um, BBC News did a study and they, they did an analysis of how people develop tolerance to these things, um, benzodiazepines, things like that. And, the impact, and I just read something a New Scientist, I should have thrown it in here. Um, new Scientist is a great science magazine, kind of, but it's much more up to date than like Scientific American. Um, subscribe to it if you're ever in, in, interested in hearing things from health, the depths of where health is to quantum physics. It's a really fun magazine. But they're talking about what the physiologic impacts of benzodiazepines like Xanax, um, which Xanax is more common than um, Valium, which is, which, which is like mother's little helper from the 60s, still commonly prescribed, but uh, they actually have done long-term studies of how the brain, what happens to brain health, and it doesn't look good. It's not something you want. Um, and these are all sedative hypnotics, but if, it, I'm gonna do, a, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna read this one for you because this is, this is something that my wife has to endure every time I see a pharmaceutical commercial, and I'm gonna stop pretty quick, but when, you, when your medicine reads like side effects including bloody or cloudy urine, chills, cold light, flu symptoms, coughing, hoarseness, decreased interest in sexual intercourse, diarrhea, painful in, 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 urination, discouragement, fear, feeling of sad or empty, irritability, itching skin, lack of appetite, loss, loss of sexual ability, desire, drive, performance, loss of interest, blah, 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 trouble concentrating, vomiting, other changes may be more unusual and extreme such as confusion, worsening symptoms of depression, hallucinations, hearing, seeing, and feeling things that are not there, suicidal thoughts, unusual excitement, nervousness, and irritability. I'm sorry, I'm not a really good at an auctioneer, but if you ever listen to those commercials, they blow my mind. I'm like, and people think that's a good idea? And so, um, I just, I, that's for mostly for your entertainment purposes, but just wanna emphasize really, there's an alternative that you can that you can seek that has added benefits. Um, yeah, so you just like these side effects aren't aren't our friend, but there are better ways about it. So you can think of what we do as like medical diplomacy. We're gonna take things nutritionally. Sometimes, not gonna lie, you better just get your sleep, get to medical intervention, get a strong approach, and then start working your way back. It's like that planting a tree now. It's all right, you get to it, and then you start building the earth and, and fertilizing so it can grow again. 
Um, and so, so we're going to use, we're going to reverse engineer everything we've been talking about to work our way into it. And this is, might be a little bit more of where, where you're um, waiting for. So the first step in all these ones, um, one is going to be physiologic. So like we'll get into exercise and acupuncture, but Chinese herbal prescriptions are unique um, in their individuality and their approach. There, there are thousands of years of literature that help us articulate what we're doing and what, we, what we're skilled at at the Wellbridge Clinic is that we're able to translate this 3,000 year old linguistic model into something that people can understand um, or at least get on board with and doctors can trust and patients can trust. Um, so Chinese herbal prescriptions and if people are like, oh, herbs, and like my dad loves to, to razz me and be like, oh, sticks and roots, yeah, yeah, that's really gonna help you. Well, most of, like 80% of pharmaceuticals um, are derived from sticks and roots, chemicals found in plants. Um, and it, there is no point on the planet that said chemistry began and ended in a pharmaceutical lab. The chemistry is still active. And one of the ways you can think about it is um, in a plant, you have a, you have a broader spectrum of chemicals. Um, but in, the, in pharmacology, they, took, they discovered an active constituent and took it and isolated it and made one concentrated pill. Be like eating, going, going to the frozen food section and getting an orange juice and just eating the ice there. It's, it'd be powerfully disgusting. Um, but within Chinese medicine, you have a bunch of mitigating chemi chemicals in there that reduce side effects, but also activate and deactivate aspects of the plant constituents. And then Chinese medicine is particularly unique in how we stack things. So we don't just go, hey, everybody, turmeric's great, or hey, everybody, ginkgo biloba is great. We go, well, we use that as a recipe for the last 2,000 years. And modern science has shown that how you combine all these herbs together actually changes the chemical outcome. And so we have to reduce things in research to understand that turmeric's fabulous, but turmeric is really well used and is one of our, one of our in our pharmacopoeia, that we use it in combination with things, for example. And we have different things. Um, jujube fruit is one of the things that you'll see in a lot of naturopathic and over-the-counter sleep aids. And we'll use that but we use it in combination with other things that help make sure it's digestible. People don't get a tummy ache. They rest better and they feel calmer and not just hit it with one. Cause then we'll fall back into that, a pill for an ill or a vitamin for an ill scenario. And then you lose a lot of the nuance um, that comes through that. Um, and then some of the easy over the counter ones that are fabulous. And I highly recommend actually combinations of these next four together. And I'll put, I, and, and we work the, like the, the GABA and the 5-HTP and the melatonin, some of my favorite over-the-counter rest sleep aids, we just don't hit people harder and harder with melatonin. It's a hormone and it's great, but it, bodies build tolerance to it. Um, but if you add in GABA and 5-HTP, you get, a, these are serotonin precursors and serotonin is one of the more common types of antidepressants um, because it gives us that satiety reflex, that, uh, that contentedness. Dopamine is like, yeah, I did it. And then serotonin's like, I'm good. And if I can it, it, like, express that one, um, GABA and 5-HTP help get that satiated, like, I'm good, I did my thing today, I'm happy about it. Melatonin is, is a hormonal approach to that one. Did you, no? Um, and then ashwagandha, um, that is an Ayurvedic herb that comes out of South Asia. Um, another great herb, and that manages cortisol levels. I found on the market, like all four, all, all five of those have really, the problem with herbal medicine is that you don't know what you're getting sometimes. I mean, even out of China, like we, we, we spend a lot of time making sure we have clean herbs, but you gotta know what you're getting. And even with GABA, 5-HTP and melatonin, from product to product, I've personally found and I'll usually test things before I get excited about anything. Um, they're different. They hit differently. They give different effects. So um, make sure you're like always consult with the healthcare provider because those of us that are in the business, we're not just like throwing stuff off the shelf at the grocery store. 
um, which sometimes really is not standardized. Um, and Amazon and, and the internet can be really, really dangerous place to be getting things like that. Um, you can get a lot of fillers, a lot of garbage, um, and sometimes in the herbal world, these things are coming from like a farm in the middle of a distant country, and they might even have like leaded gasoline driving up and down through those fields, and you're getting microdoses of lead. There's a lot of processes that are making sure that's not happening. Just saying, make sure you talk to somebody about it. Make sure that they, they know what you're taking and can help you. Um, so there's different ways to, these ones help you relax and they replenish the, our, and rebalance our cortisol levels. Um, but at the end of the day, we also do need to do some strengthening of, of our hormones because the opposite of rest is we need to have energy. Um, we need to actually get up to get down. It's kind of, I think, I think it's a Beastie Boys song. You gotta get up to get down. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. Thanks, I'm glad I'm not alone. Um, uh, but you gotta get up to get down. And, um, and so here's a couple of my favorites. This, these are super important. Um, methylated B vitamins could be a game changer. Uh, and since I'm sharing this with you all now, um, some of the nuances in taking methylated B vitamins is one, take it with food or you might likely get a tummy ache. Um, and two, <clears throat> don't take it after 12 in the afternoon because it very well can keep you up. It is, it is a powerhouse of energy. Those B vitamins improve our mood, improve our, our adrenal function, um, but they will bring you up. Um, so just be mindful of some of those things. Um, and, and methylated is in the, is in the folate, methylated, methylfolate and, and B12. You want methylcobalamin. Um, so when you're buying multivitamins, make sure you're buying a multivitamin that has vitamin B12 and folate, and it has to have the word methyl before when you read the back, just skip to that end. Um, and then careful when, just as a side note, careful when you're buying vitamins, make sure you're not getting Centrum, because that's just like laboratory chalk. Um, and then the other end of the spectrum is if you go and buy like natural grocers and like natural food stores and they have vitamins and they're like, we put acai berries and we put probiotics and we put this and that and the other thing, None of that is at a clinical dose, folks. Don't buy the stuff that has a list of all the yummy things in there because they put such a small amount of it, it's irrelevant. It's just for the label. So just a little caution, a little consumer advocacy there. Um, but when you're buying them, you wanna basically buy a simple multi, multivitamin, maybe multivitamin and get methylated B vitamins. Vitamin C, you could take all vitamin C all the time. Vitamin C is one of those powerhouse and so economical in, in, in the nutritional world. You know when you're taking too much vitamin C if you have diarrhea, loose stools, that's it. Um, unless you're taking liposomal vitamin C and then that one is a whole nother thing, I'm just gonna advise don't do that unless you're under the direction of a healthcare provider that understands vitamin C. Um, so water-soluble vitamin C, emergency, all those packets, things like that, Careful too much sugar, but vitamin C is a really, really powerful nutrient. Um, it helps with collagen fiber construction, um, and that, that corresponds to the collagen fibers in our lungs. Um, and then it helps with immunity. The list goes on and on. Vitamin C, I can't say enough about. Fish oils. Fish oils are really important. Get a high quality one. Um, spend the money, get a good one, take less. Um, like, Minimum 1,000 milligrams, one of the large, they're kind of large, not gonna lie, a larger pill. Um, and for those of us that, like, if you taste the fish oil, that should go into garbage. If you taste your fish oil, people are like, oh, I don't like fish oil, I belch it, it's disgusting. That's rancid. Your fish oil should not stink. Yes, throw it out and buy a better one because you're wasting your money, you're taking it. I know, and I'm so sorry, I hate to say that, but you, you, like, it's you know, like, It'll save you in the long run because it all like, just make sure all the best intentions um, can be refined with a little bit of better information. So vitamin C, uh, fish oils, really important. And something I wanna add to that. Hey, welcome, oh, sorry, good morning. Oh, jump in anytime. Um, with vi fish oils, um, write down EPA and DHA. Um, you want your fish oil to have high EPA and high DHA. And those are two different types of medium chain triglyceride. These are the parts of the fatty acid and they go to different parts of your brain. Um, 
forgive me, I forgot which goes to where, but one goes to the frontal lobe and one goes to the temporal lobe. And they have corresponding, like temporal lobe is gonna be more emotional regulation and this is more higher thinking. Um, and so they actually are, in, in, in MCTs, medium chain triglycerides, are the fundamental fuel of all of our cells. Mitochondria take the 38 chain MCT and drive it through and give you energy. And how efficient each one of those 38 steps are is dependent upon how much energy we have. And that's why in our, our, almost all of our energy is, comes from, is taken up in our heart and our brains. Like, I don't know what the, what the ratio is, but it's high. Um, I could look it up. But um, that's why you always see on, on the fish oil containers are like, good for heart health, good for brain health. Well, it's because they're the, they're the, they're the, the factories that are chewing up all that energy. But if you get your fish oils, make sure you can't taste it because if you can, it's rancid. Um, and then vitamin D3, and I really like K2. Unless you eat organ meats, um, K2 will be really helpful or fermented, Japanese fermented soybeans, natto. Um, we also like to call them snotto um, like, because they're so slimy. Um, but that's a really good source of uh, probiotics, the natto. Um, uh, and then uh, vitamin D3, always, always gonna be your friend, especially here in the Pacific Northwest. But don't forget, most of us live under roofs, so plenty of people in Hawaii have vitamin D3 deficiency. Um, and What's the most you can take vitamin D3, and what would be the first cytotoxicity? Cytotoxicity, um, it's, it, it interferes with calcium. Um, and so, Careful with vitamins, vitamin D3 because it's a, it's a fat soluble, like I was talking about liposomal vitamin C being dangerous. This is a fat soluble hormone. It's technically a hormone because um, our body can actually produce vitamin D3. Um, it'd be tough to, diag to dose that precisely, but the safe minimum dosing is gonna be a, about 1,000 IUs to 5,000 IUs. And then if, you, and then always ask every year, always ask your doc, to run the vitamin D3, because every so often I'm surprised. People are like, here's my blood work. And I'm like, why isn't vitamin D on your blood work? Like, I don't know, docs should know. Some people don't do it. It's becoming more and more common. I don't see that very much anymore, but um, you would dose it higher under the care and direction of somebody that's doing that blood test to know for sure. But as a general baseline, your vitamin D could be about 1,000 to 5,000 IUs um, every single day. Um, yeah, and uh, so just know that one. And just keep in mind that um, as estrogen levels drop, um, as we age, that uh, vitamin D3, estrogen, and um, have an important part of calcium laydown. And so that also can prevent osteoporosis. And so women that have lower estrogen levels are more prone to osteoporosis and osteopenia. Um, so again, vitamin D helps a lot. But there's, again, there's more complexity in there. Always take this information and like bring it into the clinic, bring it into your healthcare provider to know how you can optimize your health. The vitamin D3 is gonna be a great one and it helps with respiratory health, energy, mood. Um, so there's not a lot of things. I don't really, I try to avoid legacy pills, medications, need them when you need them. Um, and I try to avoid uh, legacy nutraceuticals. I don't believe that we should all be pounding like performance enhancing this and that and the other thing. But honestly, that list, we could all take every single day for the rest of our lives. It's simple. It's really simple and good for you. Um, and, and, and it would benefit. It would benefit everybody. And vitamin D3 having good ones. They did a lot of studies in Japan during COVID and they had to dramatically lower their, their elder care facilities, did not have the mortality rates that we did in the US. It's because they ate fish that had fish oils, medium chain triglycerides, and vitamin D. And they all, all the elders typically had much higher vitamin D3 levels. And, and that was, there, there, this, the research is out there, you can Google vitamin D3, COVID, and respiratory health. Um, and and it's, it's powerful, in other words. So, yeah, if you, like, I, I'm, only, I'm good with interaction, so if I'm spurring anything, and you're like, I wanna know more on that little piece, jump in, I, I don't wanna just like lose my voice. Well, where we just have such an outbreak of RSV, then if it affects respiratory health so much, then I'm just now really getting over it. And then thinking, wow, we should all be, we should be up with vitamin D. Yeah. For no other reason, because we've got the responsibility 
Yeah, I, I would, and I would, I would say all those trees. The bottom three are the bottom three. The, like the vitamin C and the and the D three are gonna be, like, get it now if you're in a, in a uh, respiratory, if a lot of respiratory disease coming around. Those two fish oils show that it's it, it just increases the fuel for your body to run efficiently. Um, yeah, I would, I would. And then if you have your annual exam, usually your preventative care every year with your MD should be included for free. Um, on our plans in, in Oregon at least, um, get in there and always get that vitamin D level. And so you, you can, so then you can dial it in. And a good doctor, will, if they see it low, they'll like mega dose you. Do not do what I'm about to say, but like an MD will give people up to 50,000 IUs per week for like three weeks just to really get those numbers up um, for good reason. Because people have less, it, 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 we still might get sick, but the repercussions are much lower, so, yeah. But daily fish, will, you don't have to take any supplements usually? Oh, you, you, I, I take less fish oil because we're kind of like, my house is kind of pescatarian, and, and we always go up to, this is my plug, this is like one of my favorite economies in the region are the, um, are the tribes up at Bridge of the Gods. If you haven't been up there, invite like, hey everybody, go out and buy salmon um, from the Yakima tribe and the Confederated yeah. Tribes up at Bridge of the Gods in the Gorge. Do it, it's awesome. Um, so, <laughs> but, um, but uh, yeah, eat lots of fish. I do everything. We I have such fish. fabulous. I fish, though, I don't know if that counts. It's not fresh, but. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if canned fish, I mean, sure it has a lot of the good stuff, but in all things, fresh is better. But I'll go up there and in the fall, we'll go buy like, We'll, we'll just like buy all of our fish and we're almost out. So it's, Feb it's, it's February 1st now and like the beginning, at the end of September we bought our fish and we're running out. Um, but I would just, I, I, I cut them into steaks, vacuum seal them and it's so good. It's so good. It's a little sunshine in the middle of winter. There you go, yeah, right You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, okay, and then uh, another way, you gotta get up to get down again. Like, so exercise. Um, I don't care what you do, just move. Just move. Um, and, and we can go into research and stuff like that. I'm sure you don't need to hear about 319 men and 403 women. Um, exercise is good. But it doesn't, you don't have to be like an Olympic athlete. Exercise. Just go for a walk. And, and in here, I'm like, how did the study go? Because I think it was as simple as um, people went for a walk once a week. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be dramatic. You don't have to run a marathon. Just... Just go enjoy yourself and do something that you enjoy that you want to keep going. Um, oh yeah, yeah, here, this study shows that um, if you just walk, oh, and people that walk for a brisk, uh, at a brisk pace for six blocks, that's so doable. Just, just cruise for six blocks. Um, and then it showed a reduced risk of sleep disorders and a reduced risk of nightmares. Um, and then Chinese medicine has this whole articulation of what, why we have nightmares, um, which is really interesting because typically it's a, it's a reduction of circulation. So like things, it, it might be, and in that, we could reverse engineer that into a modern physiologic conversation of like, if you're not having good circulation perforating through the liver, you're not detoxing and things like that. Um, and so you can have those conversations. And, I, and if anybody wants to dive in to translating that, it's kind of fun. Um, so let's, I'll dive into acupuncture because it's, it's, it gets so little airtime, and I really want to make sure people understand that um, while this has been around for like some, some literature indicates 5,000 years, if you go into archaeologic digs, you find like 5,000 years ago, people were, were using needles to stimulate our physiology. Um, and I just want to like explore it just a little bit with us because what's happening there is I don't really, I like, I love the old books. And I love speaking the old language, but the essence of Chinese medicine is that it's an organizational system. And I've been using holistic a lot. Um, it's an organizational system to help us understand the corresponding interaction of each of our organs and our musculoskeletal and our cognitive health. Um, but what it, the, the problem is that I came to this to becoming a, a doctor of acupuncture is through skepticism. Um, it, it's a, the linguistic barrier is the biggest problem. I run into doctors and nurses all the time, and they're just like, I just don't get it. 
I'm like, I get, I, neither did I. It's all right. And, and, and I just wrote an article um, that uh, I could share with y'all um, on translating into physiology. But in short, we're kind of like, the, what is an acupuncturist? We're, we're electricians. We might, we might also look at us as computer programmers of the body. So you need a, if you have a house, you need a carpenter, you need a plumber, and you need an electrician. I mean, I, I like lights. I like TV and Wi-Fi and stuff like that. Um, but at the end of the day, you got to understand that everything in your body operates on the balance of electrolytes. It's the fundamental interaction. And um, there are uh, bioengineers that are really breaking it down and clarifying exactly what I'm saying. And I can totally go down the nerd, nerd rabbit hole deep <laughs> on this one. But, um, but at the end of the day, we're electricians. We're balancing these electrical uh, signals. And in doing that, we get vasodilation. We get changes in connective tissue. Um, we get local and distal neuro neurological changes. In a study um, of carpal tunnel syndrome, they mapped, they, they, the brain has been really, the body has been mapped on the brain. So since the 1930s, they've been like, like st stimulating different parts of our body and then measuring what part of the brain gets activated. Um, and in some recent fMRI studies, they studied how in people with carpal tunnel, the sensation, because it's the neurologic damage and, and neuropathies, these areas that typically, so let's just like kind of expand it, but there's a part of the brain that has like, it triggers here, here, and here, but those spots get blurred and, co and coagulate. And so instead of having three individualized sensory reactions in the brain when they're trying to stimulate the hand and test it, it just turns into a blob. And as with acupuncture, and this is an acupuncture study, and I did an acupuncture study um, of treating the carpal tunnel, and they watched it progressively over a series of 12 weeks. Those points became more distinct again into what is otherwise in the healthy population, where if you hit here, here, and here, it's gonna be a spot here, here, and here in our brain. And it just helped the body go, oh, okay, instead of just like looking through a haze of stimuli. Um, so, I mean, when I read studies like that, it just, I get excited, I'm like, our bodies are amazing. But what that also says, and there are other studies that show that as you do that, the parts of our brain that register stress are animal parts of our brain down-regulate with acupuncture. And our, our part of our higher, higher thinking brains up-regulate. So we actually go from this fight or flight into this higher thinking brain, which is really exciting when you can just categorize it, because we've been talking about it, but we say things like chi and spirit and shen and things like that, and that's just, it doesn't mean anything to me. But if you tell me, oh, this part of my brain that otherwise registers stress, down-regulates with acupuncture, that's telling me something. And then you also have that, um, the HPA axis, our vasovagal re reflex, we're able to, take bigger breath, expansive breathing with, with acupuncture treatments, and our nervous system starts down-regulating in multiple ways. Um, and that really comes down to in, as circulation. It's just really a good acupuncturist can see where, through an intake, like, where is that? I mean, I get lots of people that come in and sleep, and I'm like, oh, you just have, you're not breathing well. And it's so easy to fix when you take a physiologic approach, too. So I don't want to go into the vitamin for an ill and just go, okay, take your vitamin D and your melatonin and you'll be fine. Um, there's a, it, just take a holistic approach, and that's really what I want to share with you all. Um, and don't worry, you're not alone if, if, you, if you venture or have uh, ventured into acupuncture. Um, Two billion people in the world have used acupuncture. I'm sure it's even higher. Unfortunately, I think only about 90% of Americans have. So we have a communication issue here, and that's one of the things that was my mission is to share it in, in an enthusiastic and fun way so people can get the best of it. Um, I know like, uh, like we have so many s clinics here in town, um, and you know, you gotta choose your provider to what resonates with you. Um, and, but I, 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 like, I like balance, I have my feet in both sides. I like the old, I know the old, but I also want to make sure I'm moving forward to reach all the people that 90% of people that are like, that's just weird. I'm like, I get you. And let me tell you why it's cool. Um, and this is why it's really exciting. Um, and again, like if we're doing that, if you picture those dots and lines, um, that's just, they're really brilliant, but they're kind of inaccurate understanding of how our body really is. 
But they had to categorize it. You know the pictures of the acupuncture men or models? Um, you just like go through, um, and these areas are where there's a, a, a greater affiliation or a greater overlay of connective tissues and nerve ganglia tend to be what an acupuncture point is. And interestingly enough, like you can get a gastric reflex at stomach 36, one of the most studied um, points. You, and PC6 right here is also used for nausea in chemo for uh, people undergoing chemotherapy, motion-related sickness, and pregnancy. Um, and it, but it also, a really large amount of studies show that it's been extraordinarily helpful in reducing angina. So people that are having heart troubles. Um, kind of interesting, and so, but it, and it goes back to that brain map is, is what the theories are really kind of pointing at. And so we, we trigger it, we get a response in the central nervous system, and we get a local response. Um, and so when we're doing that, we're making sure that there's circulation. So, they, so you can think of it like a garden hose. And so when I'm dealing with carpal tunnel, which then can correspond to insomnia because of tightness, triggering the vagus nerve, putting us into a fight or flight, looking at it holistically. But if you have a kink in the hose, you can tr crank up the water all you want. You can throw all the pills all you want. You can do all the surgeries all you want. You can clip that carpal tunnel. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to. But you can do anything you want. Um, but if you don't have, if you don't take the kink out of the hose, you're not gonna be able to water the garden, which in that little example is there. But it has a repercussion to how we're breathing and sleeping. Um, some of the things as we're wrapping up, um, you just really make sure that Acupuncture, I was actually just chatting with some physical therapists today, really lovely folks, um, um, and over at Wildwood PT, really, really lovely people over in Northeast Portland. And um, just we're chatting about what trigger dry needling is and trigger, tr trigger therapy. You probably heard of dry needling at this point now. Um, so there's like, there's Chinese medicine, like again, we're just like, acupuncture is like, a, think of it as like a pizza. And then there's different types of acupuncture. But a whole acupuncturist goes to 4,000 4, hours of school. There's a four-year degree. Um, I'm a, a doctoral candidate right now. Um, and so I'm, just, I'm going back to school to tie that together. Um, after 15 years, the doctorates were not, were not really common when I was in school. Um, and so uh, just understanding, like, there's a lot of different ways to get the, the, the benefits of acupuncture, but you want to have a holistic approach. Because every acupuncturist does dry kneeling. Every acupuncturist does um, uh, uh, trigger point therapy. It's just, can you put the whole thing? So our goal is to always make sure that people can eat, have the whole meal. Um, but those are just different types of acupuncture that are advertised, and I just wanted to just explore that a little bit. For um, And the interesting thing is, is that there was actually a so much research um, that shows that acupuncture has remarkable effects on insomnia directly. And one of the tricks in these research studies is sometimes they just use, they have to reduce, because randomized controlled trials, they, they can we're like, we can only use three points for this study because we can't do a comprehensive Chinese medical approach. Um, but in here, like in this study, they showed that over 85% of the people either limit, got rid of their insomnia or showed improvement with their insomnia through acupuncture treatments. And we, we treat it all the time. People usually come to us in pain, that's how they find us, but we're also making sure that they get added benefits. So, um, so and again, pain is the thing. And, and so whether we're treating the pain, the nervous, the hyper vigilance of our nervous system, which is so common, um, we're always trying to get a pain-free environment and a more relaxed environment. And um, people consistently, when I work for the VA, I'm always reporting quality of life changes. So I'm interviewing my groups of people um, of like, what's your quality of life now? Um, and it's subjective, but it can be objectively when I say, well, how many hours of sleep do you get a night? How did you, like, how's your, how are your relationships? Um, and consistently, when you take a holistic approach, nutritionally, exercise, and then use a very unique approach through man balancing the electricity in the nervous system of our body, you can get a massive, massive change. Um, 
Oh yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I guess I got ahead of it. And it, with, with the carpal tunnel syndrome, we're really good at so many different things. And it, it, what we, what I'm trying to convey is like, a lot of people come to us for a lot of different things. Any one of these, even hormone problems, um, menstrual dysregulation, menopause, um, low testosterone, um, it, like things that you wouldn't expect. Um, but when you take a comprehensive approach, things get better and stay better too. Um, and that's just taking a comprehensive approach. Um, in, in, in conclusion, there's the four steps that I really want to make sure that everybody has in there. And I hope I got you, got, added some value to your lives by sharing uh, all this to you. Um, just like make sure you're managing pain. That's usually the first one. Or if somebody that you know is in pain, probably not sleeping well. Um, and they might not even be talking about it because there's a lot of things that are common, but they're not normal. And we just sit there and endure. And I want to know, let people know that they have an option that they don't have to endure. Um, and, then, uh, and then helping with the adrenal glands, managing our stress, knowing, using our stress well, using our procrastination well. It's a tool. It's a tool. Um, but knowing how to ride it and, and not burn the engine out inappropriately. That's, that's the message I really want to share. And, and, and managing it with nutrition. And then exercise, again, is gonna kind of shave off those peaks of, of, our, of our stress hormones. And nutrition, nutrition, nutrition. Let thy food be thy medicine, thy medicine be thy food. Um, yeah, so if necessary, again, I'm not against medications, but they don't have long-term benefits. Um, I'm always making sure people have added benefits to their healthcare, and that's really what we specialize in. So. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Do you have any questions? I've never done acupuncture before, but I'm totally on the train. Yeah. So where where would you? I mean, I guess I'm only. I don't have. You said the pain, so that's not part of it. I do feel like part of my sleep has to do with me drinking too much at this point for coming to work. But um, how would? Where would you start? Or like, you know, if it, if it was just predominantly probably. Oh, hey, baby, we're getting on board with this acupuncture stuff. Is awesome, bro. Uh, yeah, so like where would you start or what would you ask for? Or, totally. Um, yeah. So. Have you done that? Yeah, I've had, I've had it up in the ears. I've had it right in the middle of the forehead. I've had it up on the hand here. It's just, it's just a roll of little needles. You tap and you don't feel it. Yeah, I know. I know. It, it, like people are like, I'm afraid of needles. Like, no, it's different than nurses. It's different than doctors. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. First off, we're here, like our, our team is here twice a month. Did I get your, yeah. qu did I answer your questions? Um, pretty much, yes. Yeah. You know, just get me and I'll, and I'll dive deeper for you, okay? okay right, thank you, appreciate you. Um, we're here twice a month doing community acupuncture. Sure. In this room, sometimes in that room. Uh, okay. Um, so jump on, on that yeah. one. Atalanta <coughs> knows, uh, like we're here. I'll be here next Thursday and then Brad will be uh, the last Tuesday of the month. Okay, about the same time then? Um, different I, times. I, I, I think I see notes for it. I think he's got like the massage from folks, but I kind of... I we're not the like, massage team. No, okay. two, different, two different entities. Yeah, we're totally different. It's all employee wellness stuff. Yeah. yeah. So jump in on, on our schedule. We're, yeah. we're in here. And sometimes I like if, if yeah. we have an empty chair, I have somebody to give a shout out on the radio. Like if we have an empty chair, I'll be in, oh. and listen. But um, yeah. uh, how, how do more people find out about the acupuncture things? The, 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 the community acupuncture events? Well, they, they, well, they, they sent us emails. It's just it, before they were like the benefits. I'm like, what, where are they doing oh, this, okay, this yeah. lucky stuff? Why are they doing acupuncture? Or I didn't realize, like, I didn't know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's legit, legit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's totally legit. Yeah. It's, on our, it's on the yeah, emails yeah. that your manager should be sharing it with you. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And then we have the maybellcenter.org forward slash employee website. Okay. Yeah. So if you just go to the employee website, yeah. there's the information on how to sign up. Yeah. Fantastic. That's great. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's awesome. No, for real. Like, use that. And then, like, that's like, that's community acupuncture. What we do at the clinic is we do clinical acupuncture. So in there, you're going to be in a room full of people. And we just kind of whisper and be like, all right, how can I best be of service? And then we kind of give you a little structure of, like, what that's about. And then that comprehensive bit where I'm like, all right, let's see what's going on in the digestive system. Tell me yeah. about your sleep. That's a 90 minute okay. visit the first time. Okay. And we go through it and we, we do a com comprehensive evaluation. And then we put together a, like a very well structured and articulated 
make sure that you're like, okay, do you, like we explain ourselves. Um, like, I'm really proud of what we do. I really believe this is how healthcare should be. And, and like really focusing on the, on the individual and we get the, the results yeah. to show it. But um, that's what we do at the cool. clinic. Um, and if you want to- Not at NUNM though. No, 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 we have, we, no we're a private practice. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, we, if we're at the Wellbridge Clinic. We're on Southeast Cesar Chavez and Powell. Here, the Safeway's at somewhere. Yeah, yeah. No, like, we can see the Safeway out okay. our window. Okay, oh, that's, how I get, that's how I get my house. Okay. Yeah, yeah, here, I'll give you a card. That's like, awesome, yeah, like, for sure. Our teams uh, will always help out. Yeah. What's your name? My name's Kirsten. Kirsten. Yeah, what's your name? I'm John. John. Yeah. Pleasure, man. Thank Likewise. you so much. Yeah. Totally. Jump in on that one, and then, like, I can go on and on. I get excited yeah. about it, and our team's pretty fabulous. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Sounds good. Thanks for hanging. Yeah, man. Thank you for being here. I appreciate all the information. Totally. I'll be here next month doing another talk. So, like, and I'll dive in each month on this. Different topics or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one kind of got my attention. Something just reminded me. Of course, I'm coming in after not, just not, not sleeping. Like, I was off for two weeks because of COVID in September. And I used to be one of those, like, before I even took the pillow, I'd be asleep. But anymore, I just suffer with, I just never, my body just never slept again. Like, I never got good sleep again. It's That's like four a months. thing. That COVID insomnia is a thing. It, yeah. it, it knocks people different ways, but yeah, that's definitely that's one of them. That's the only lingering effect of it, yeah, is that I just do not sleep anymore. It's just eating, I can, I've been taking, unfortunately, Benadryl, but also just to try and get myself on a sleep schedule. Like, okay, I'm going to go to bed at this time and wake up. It doesn't matter. Like, I can go weeks and two, three hours of sleep, and it's just my body's not regulating like it needs to regulate for me to... Sleep like I used to, if that'll ever happen again, you know what I mean? No, so, yeah, no, sure. a lot of common things, not normal. Cool. Like, there's, there's, a, there's an option, and that's something actually, like, somebody came in, like, for the first time yesterday on my schedule, and it was a COVID insomnia. Yeah, okay. okay yeah, so cool. it's a thing. Cool, cool. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'd rather do that, yeah, because then I draw, like, I get, like, 100 tablets of 25 milligrams a month. Ooh, and, yeah, and that's what I've been doing, and of course it's not, but it's not healthy. Like, I realize this isn't the solution, so I've kind of stopped doing that, but I'm still not adjusting. My sleep's still not happening, but yeah, the Benadryl hasn't worked. And yeah, I have an appointment with my doctor, so in like two months, so that'd be cool to get a little bit more informational and her know that, hey, we've kind of gone this way. And, but yeah, for sure, I'm excited. That's so awesome. We, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, call the team, and we can do insurance benefit checks to make sure we, like, cool. like it's, we have a full front desk, so. It's cool. Don't hey. it would get you. Worst case, man. It's out of pocket. It's worth it. All right, man. I appreciate you. your time. Cheers to take care. Oh, Bye. Thanks, everybody. Hope that was fun.